Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Mark and I love the game Lord of the Rings LCG Living Card Game by Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, I play the game, I'm in the community, and uh, it's actually this game that got me into the hobby of really solo board gaming. I love a lot of games like Mage Knight, Arkham Horror LCG as well, uh, Spirit Island, uh, Gaia Project, uh, Dune Imperium. There's a lot of great games out there. Uh, too many bones, but this is my favorite out of all the games that I play, and uh, a lot of it is because I love Lord of the Rings as a franchise. I love the books and uh, the movies uh, that, that Peter Jackson put out, and so uh, you know, my interest in the subject material got me into the game, and the game's uh, quality, as Fairmir says, has made me stay, and so uh, I play it solo. Uh, I have all the physical cards, but uh, on my channel, I'm actually going to play through the game uh, digitally. But I do have all the physical cards, and I recommend that you play it that way. It's the most, it's the most rewarding way to play, to actually hold the cards and to interact with, with them physically. But I don't really have a good setup for recording uh, that, uh, you know, the physical game. So, uh, so what I'm going to do in this series is I'm going to play the, the game. There's like a total, I think, of 189. The, the, it's either that or it's in the low 190s, but I want to play each quest uh, in my channel. Uh, it'll take me some time to do that, but but I want to play through each quest solo, where I have just one deck and, you know, three heroes, of course, and uh, you play through each quest chronologically. And I will only be using player cards in my decks that were available at the time of that quest release. So the game came out in 2011. And uh, the, the first product was, of course, the corset. And then after that, Hunt for Gollum was released. It was an adventure pack. And it came with, uh, you know, Bilbo, uh, the hero. And it came with, uh, with some player cards. And so we can add those to the deck as we go uh, progressively through the game. And my channel is going to include uh, standalones and nightmare decks, uh, which... Um, were sort of intermittently released throughout the game's release. So I'll be going through everything chronologically, and uh, hopefully I can accomplish this over a period of a couple of years. And uh, glad you're here with me at the start. Um, I'm calling this deck So It Begins. Uh, obviously, that's that line that Theoden uh, says at Helm's Deep so ominously, and uh, just seems appropriate for the beginning of this long trek. Uh, I'm using a hero that I want to just mention, which is Barabor. Uh, I'll use her a lot, especially in the first uh, half or quarter or third of, of the, the game's progression. Because in solo, you know, we don't get to have a guy across the table who's the combat guy and we're the healing and, you know, we're the support guy or whatever. You know, like we have to do everything. And so that requires having cards that... Uh, are defensive, offensive, uh, you know, for attacking. Uh, we have to have card draw. We have to have threat reduction. Everything has to be in our deck. And so card draw is so important. It's important, of course, even in multiplayer, but in solo, it's crucial. And there's just not a better way to draw cards than to have Bearborn in your deck. Obviously, you, if she's exhausted, you lose out on having another hero. But because she draws allies and other cards, uh, they can ready heroes then it's not really a price that really uh, that comes back to bite us. So she is wonderful. We'll use her a lot. I think she's my favorite hero in terms of just solo play. Eowyn's also really great. She uh, quests for four, and uh, so she's, the to this day, probably the best quester, uh, he, questing hero because of her action. She can actually get up to five in the game. Uh, and then Glowing. Uh, I like using him in this uh, quest specifically. It's not so much that I love glowing, but he works great in uh, the passage through Mirkwood. And I'll get to show you how that works as we move along. So this website I'm looking at here is RingsDB. And so if you're new to the game and you've not checked out RingsDB, you need to create an account. It's great because you can go up to My Collection and you can go here to Adventure Packs and select... Um, I actually have everything in the game, but right now I don't have everything selected. But right now, uh, like if you only have the core set, you would select core set times three. And uh, that's because the game used to be released. Uh, you had to get three core sets to get all, you know, three of each card. 
that's not true with the revised core. Uh, one thing I'll mention um, is that I will not be using campaign cards in this in this uh, series. I'll just be playing each quest as a standalone that includes sagas, everything. Uh, just I won't use campaign cards. Um, well, so once you've built your deck, uh, then you click right here on play on dragon cards. And you have to create an account on dragon cards, but uh, C. Stan, Chris uh, Stanford, if you're in, in the community at all, you know him. Uh, he has created, uh, he's behind RingsDB and Dragon Cards, so we owe him a great deal. Okay, so we're going to load the quest here, which is done by just going to the menu, load quest, and then you select. I'm going to select Passage of Barkwood, and definitely not going to do the Nightmare. I'm going to do the normal version. Okay, so the way Lord of the Rings works is, uh, and I won't talk about all the minutiae of the rules this much in, in all my videos, but just this initial one, just in case you're new to the game, I'll, I'll try to be a little bit more clear on rules and timing and sequences. So at the beginning of the game, you draw six cards before you set up the quest, and you have an opportunity to mulligan. So you would take those six cards, you would shuffle them back into the deck and draw six new cards. Uh, so if you play Arkham Horror, it's different than like Arkham Horror's Mulligan. You have to just decide to reshuffle and draw a completely new hand. I want primarily to get Steward of Gondor, so I'm just going to keep this opening hand. And now that I've decided that, I can move on to game setup. So Passage Through Mirkwood 1A, Flies and Spiders, says you are traveling through Mirkwood Forest, carrying an urgent message from King Thranduil, to the Lady Galadriel of Lorien. As you move along the dark trail, the spiders gather around you. Search the encounter deck for one copy of the forest spider and one copy of the old forest road and add them to the staging area. Then we shuffle the encounter deck. Okay, so in Dragon Cards, as you can see, both of those cards are already in staging when you select this uh, quest. Here's Old Forest Road. And here's Forest Spider and they'll stay here in staging and contribute three threat uh, during this round. Okay, 1B has some great flavor text here, and it's from The Hobbit, uh, but we have to make eight progress to advance past 1B. Okay, so let's go, and again, this is the first video, so I'm gonna be a little bit more detailed than I will be going forward, but let's just talk about each phase of the round as we go. So that was all set up. So first phase is resource phase. And what that means is you draw a card and every hero gets a resource. And during that resource phase, after you've drawn cards, after you've gained a resource, you can take actions uh, during that action window. So let's take an action during that action window. Let's exhaust Spare of War. She can exhaust to draw two cards, limit once per round. So there we go. We took an action during the resource phase. Now during planning, this is the primary action window uh, of the entire round. Um, this is when you can play allies from your hand and attachments from your hand. Um, events are like, I don't have another event other than, than this one, but this is a response. So it has to be in response to the encounter deck doing something. But there might be a card that's not a response, it's an action card, um, like Sneak Attack, that you can play during an action window. So if I wanted to, I could play Sneak Attack right now, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, so I just need to decide, do I want to play any allies or heroes, or not, not, not heroes, allies or attachments. And I, and I can't right now. I don't have enough resources to do anything other than just quest with Eowyn. So let's move on to the quest phase. This uh, phase is really kind of detailed. There are a few steps. First of all, step one, the beginning of the quest phase, you do have an action window there. This is where you would want to sneak attack Gandalf in. And then you move on to commit to uh, characters to the quest. You can commit however many you want. I'm going to commit uh, Eowyn, and she's committing uh, for four willpower. Then I can take some actions if I wanted to. Now we go on the staging where we reveal a card. If the card has win revealed, you can't take any actions. You can only do responses. So like test of will is a response. But let's just see what happens. It's going to be Chieftain Uftak. So he's a big bad uh, enemy here. Okay, so he comes into play. And so that was staging. And now we can take action. So if I want to, I can take an action. Let's 
do it uh, uh, just so that my threat stays low. Let's go ahead and discard a uh, airborne hammersmith here. Okay, so we discarded him from our hand and we took this action. Discard one ca card from your hand to give AON plus one willpower until the end of the phase. This effect may be triggered by each player once per round. So I just boosted AON to five willpower total. So that was the action window after staging. Then quest resolution, uh, which is uh, either I placed progress on the quest or I didn't, that's called questing successfully, or I neither quested successfully or unsuccessfully, which is this, zero progress. Or I was unsuccessful and my threat goes up by the difference between the, the threat in the staging area and my willpower. And so it was neither a successful or an unsuccessful quest. Uh, and so that's how I, the quest was resolved. Just basically nothing happened. And now I can play, take player actions if I want to within the framework of the quest phase. I won't do that. Okay, turn travel. Uh, travel is kind of weird because you can travel to a location, but you do that, you have a travel opportunity. You have the opportunity to to take a location from the staging area and move it into the active location. You can do that. And then there's an action window. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. But we're gonna travel here to Old Forest Road. And there's a response to, to uh, Old Forest Road after you travel to Old Forest Road. The first player may choose and ready one character he controls. We're gonna ready Bearbor. Character is a hero and an ally, but it's not an enemy. Okay, so she readied, and we knew, because it's set up this way every single time, this is sort of the, the strategy that I have employed. I'll always exhaust Bearboard, then I ready her with Old Force Road. And so we, we won't take any actions during the travel phase. Now during the encounter, there is optional engagement, and there's engagement checks. So optionally, if I want to, I can decide, and then multiplayer, uh, the uh, encounter phase is much more interesting but we can decide to engage an enemy like Chieftain Effect if we want to. Well, I don't really want to, he would, he would bring uh, pain, so we're not gonna do that. Uh, if I wanted to, I could optionally engage Forest Spider, but I'm just not gonna optionally engage anybody. So I pass on the opportunity to do that. But if you ever do optionally engage, then you can take actions. And then, and so this is so nice, this left column in Dragon Cards, if you just kind of follow it while you're new, it kind of helps you. Uh, so optional engagement, we passed on that, then engagement checks. So what happens is Chieftain Uthak is going to look for somebody to sort of uh, attack. And so we're, we're beneath him though, because we have a 20, a threat of 28. His engagement cost is 35, so he doesn't really see us as a threat. And so we don't have to worry about dealing with him yet. And so that's the strategy of the Lord of the Rings is to keep a low threat so that you can leave enemies in the staging area. The problem is, though, that that will start building up will uh, threat in the staging area. Okay, so we're going to not optionally engage him, but during engagement checks, he does not come down. But Force Spider does because his engagement cost is lower than our threat. So he comes down, and when he does, after Force Spider engages a player, it gets plus one attack until the end of the round. So I'll just put that plus one on Forest Spider. So that's the encounter phase. If I wanted to, I could take actions there. Just when you're playing this game, initially get the rules reference out, look at those tables. Everything's really spelled out. There's a lot of uh, nuance to, to the game, but really you can take actions during action windows. Sometimes some actions say something like combat action, so you can only take it during the combat round or phase, or travel action could only be taken during the travel action window. But most actions are just actions that can be taken uh, generally. Okay, so that's the encounter phase. Now combat, uh, there is a beginning of combat, which later on in the game we'll hear about archery, but uh, you, then you deal shadows. Before you can take any actions, you deal a shadow card to each enemy. So that you take a card off the encounter deck and you place it face down uh, underneath that enemy or next to the enemy. And so when he attacks, you know, we'll reveal that and there could be, uh, there very, it creates a little bit of a uh, variability to what can happen. So he's got his shadow cards. Then uh, for some reason it doesn't say here, but there is an action window 
after dealing shadow cards, and then there's enemy attacks, then there's player attacks. So he's going to attack. I'm not going to take any actions, but he's going to attack, and I'm going to declare Glowing as a defender. So step one is declaring a defender and exhausting Glowing. Step, uh, well, I think I'm saying that wrong, but the, so there are four steps. I forget exactly how it goes, but anyway, so he's attacking for three against Glowing's one, and then we're going to reveal a shadow card. And there is no shadow, but he's, uh, his three attack against my one defense means Glowing was damaged for two. And then Glowing has this response. After Glowing suffers damage, add one resource to his resource pool for each point of damage he just suffered. So he's at three resources. So that's good. You know, it's good to take damage with Glowing is the idea. Okay, and now I will attack back with Barabor. She can only do her action once per round. So she'll attack for two against Forest Spider's one defense. And so that's just a uh, one damage is placed on Forest Spider, not enough to kill it. Okay, at the end of the combat phase, because everybody's exhausted, there are no more enemies to attack, no more uh, characters uh, to attack back, uh, then we will discard shadow cards. And you discard shadow cards at the end of the combat round in any order you want. So if there were like five enemies, you could... Uh, it, to your advantage, discard cards. Like if you had uh, sh uh, Shadow of the Past and you wanted a particular card to go back on top of the encounter deck, you could decide the order at that point. You can also decide the order of the enemy attacks and all that. Okay, so then there's the last phase is the refresh phase. You ready all your characters and all your cards and you raise your threat by one and you pass the first player token. But in solo, we don't ever pass the first player token. We just get to hold it. There is an action window after the refresh, uh, refreshing of all the characters and raising your threat by that one point. And so there are times where there are refresh actions that you can only take during that action window. But that's the structure of a round. Now at the end of the round, this uh, four spider no longer has that advantage of the plus one attack. Okay, so round two will go a lot more quickly now. We will exhaust uh, We'll just go on in the planning phase. We'll exhaust two cards with Barabor. And then I'm going to spend two leadership resources to pay for Steward of Gondor. Uh, so this is the first card I've played, and it's appropriate because it's probably the best card in the game. Attached to a hero, attached hero gains the Gondor trait. We're going to put that on Barabor. And now there's an action you can take during, we're doing it during this action window. Uh, we can exhaust Steward of Gondor to add two resources to attach Hero's resource pool. So Barabor now has four resources. Okay, so I have a lot to, that I can do uh, with, with those resources. Uh, what I'm going to choose to do here is actually put out a uh, Daughter of the Nimmerdale. And uh, later on, we can exhaust her. We can take this action, exhaust Daughter of the Nimmerdale to heal up to two damage on any one hero. So Glowing is going to take uh, damage and then be healed by Daughter of the Nimmerdale. All right, I have uh, one resource left on Barabor. Let's go ahead and pay for this attachment, Protector of Lorien. We can attach it to a hero. And uh, while it's attached to the hero, we can take this action, uh, discard a card from your hand to give attached hero plus one defense or plus one willpower until the end of the phase. You can only do that three times. Uh, per phase, but you could have three Protector of Lorians on one hero. Let's put that on a Glowing. And the reason why I have Protector of Lorian is mostly so that there, there are some shadow cards that make you discard an attachment. Well, I don't want to lose Steward of Gondor, and so I just allow myself to discard Protector of Lorian. But, and it can be useful. It can uh, keep Glowing from taking damage that could, uh, you know, destroy him. Okay, so I will uh, go ahead and pay two resources from Eowyn's pool to put Unexpected Courage onto Glowing. And you can attach it to a hero, exhaust Unexpected Courage to ready attached hero. So that's really powerful. We can exhaust him to quest or defend, and then we can ready him again. Okay, and then I have two leadership resources, but I'm just going to hang on to them for now. 
Okay, I'm just going to quest with Eowyn. I'm not going to quest with uh, Daughter of the Nimmerdale. And I'm not going to quest with Glowing. Okay, we reveal Hummerhorns, uh, which is obviously a difficult enemy because it's got a higher threat. Uh, not threat, engagement. I say that a lot. I get threat and engagement it's just mixed up in my brain. But they're two different things. Uh, so the, the number 40 is the engagement cost. And then that little one in the thing that looks like the top of Baradur is the threat. Okay, so uh, it enters the staging area. No wind revealed or anything. We made one progress on Old Forest Road. And if I wanted to, I could, you know, discard a card like I did last round to boost Eowyn and put a second progress on Old Forest Road. But I'm not going to do that because I might would potentially lose Steward of Gondor. Somehow there are some shadow cards and other events. Uh, I think it was the shadow cards that can make us discard cards. And so I'm just going to hang on to that in case we lose this Steward of Gondor. Okay, so nowhere to travel. And I couldn't travel even if I wanted to because I have an active location. During the encounter phase, I'm not going to option engage uh, Hammerhorns for sure because when he engages us, we deal five damage to a single hero you control. So we do not want our threat to ever get to 40. And I'm not going to option engage Chieftain Uthak, and neither of them will engage us during engagement checks. Okay, so combat, Force Spider gets a Shadow card. Let's go ahead and exhaust Daughter of the Nimmerdale to heal Glowing uh, completely. And she heals for two, a hero. Okay, so I could take this undefended to attack. Uh, I'm trying to remember, there was there, there's one though that's like really nasty if you do undefended. So I think I'd just rather defend with him. So he's defending for one against two, and there's no shadow effect. So one damage on glowing, and one resource because of his response. Now I'm going to ready glowing, and then I'll attack back two against one, puts a second damage on four spider. So the idea with my deck is I want Glowing to be damaged. Like I could have discarded the card to give him an additional defense and then he wouldn't have been damaged. But I want to get resources on Glowing by taking damage. And so I really want to leave one Force Spider in play pretty much the whole game and constantly let him sort of chip away Glowing and I get resources on Glowing by doing that. And then I get resources on Barivore by... Uh, constantly, every round, exhausting Steward of Gondor. So, really, spirit resources are the hardest to, to come by in this deck. Okay, at the end of combat, we discarded the Shadow card, and now we refresh, and we go on to round three. And we will, of course, exhaust Bear War to draw two cards. And we will exhaust Steward of Gondor to give her uh, two more resources. Okay, let's go ahead and put Glaywine into play. He is an ally that has this action on his card. Exhaust Glaywine to choose a player. That player draws a card. So I just drew a Test of Will, which was great, because now if a bad treachery comes out, I can cancel it. So I'll leave this resource on Eowyn. Um, and then let's go ahead and put out this guard of the Citadel. This is what you call a chump. Uh, we'll use him to block uh, attacks, and then he leaves play. It doesn't bother us, but it keeps our heroes from being attacked and even damaged. Okay, we're going to quest with Eowyn. And since I have a glowing, um, since we have an unexpected courage, and since I have a chump here, I'm going to quest also with glowing. So that gives me a little bit more willpower. I'm at six. I'm going to leave him, uh, actually I'm going to ready him. Because uh, Necromancer's Reach, well, I wouldn't, mi I wouldn't mind him getting damaged anyway. So let's just leave him exhausted. Okay, we're going to reveal Forest Spider. Okay, so uh, again, I can discard a card to clear this location and guarantee that next round I can, if a location comes out, that I could travel uh, to it. But I'm not worried about that. I want to hang on to this Steward of Gondor still, so... Uh, one progress placed on Old Forest Road. All right now, during the, the encounter phase, again, none of these are going to optionally engage us, but but uh, the Forest Spider will. And again, whenever the Forest Spider engages us, it gets plus one until the end of the round. Okay. Now I'm going to ready uh, Glowing. 
And so now we have some combat. Uh, let's uh, give these guys shadow cards. And I want to chump with the guard of the citadel. So I'm going to chump against the three attack uh, for a spider. And there's no shadow effect. So guard of the citadel is going to leave play. When he does, I'm going to play this card, Valiant Sacrifice. Response, after an ally card leaves play, that card's controllers can't draw two cards. So, you know, it's not so bad losing allies. Okay, now I'm going to defend with Glowing against this Forest Spider. He's attacking for two against one. And there's no shadow effect. That's one damage on Glowing. He gets a resource from that damage. I'll exhaust Daughter of the Nimmerdale to heal Glowy. And things are going well. At the end of the combat round phase, we'll discard the shadow cards. Refresh the next round. Okay, we'll exhaust Steward of Gondor and Bear of War to draw two cards. Let's go ahead and draw a card with Glaywine. I'm not worried about him uh, being exhausted. You know, there's the Necromancer's Reach that damages exhausted characters, but he has two health. So right now I'm not worried. Uh, but later on, uh, potentially, if he has a damage on him, I wouldn't uh, want to exhaust him. Okay, so it's time to maybe bring Gandalf into play. And uh, oh, by the end of the round, we should have removed this attack from the Force Spider. Um, we will, we need to do something with these resources on Berevor, I think. Uh, let's go ahead and put another Daughter of the Nimmerdale into play. I'd rather have her than uh, Self-Preservation because, again, you can be forced to discard uh, attachments. I want to hang on to my Test of Wills, the ability to play Test of Wills, so I won't play this Unexpected Courage quite yet. So we're going to see Gandalf for the first time. So during questing, there's that action window. Before we commit characters, let's go ahead and play Gandalf using Sneak Attack. And so Sneak Attack tells us play, put one ally card into play from your hand. At the end of the phase, if that ally is still in play, return it to your hand. So he just entered play. It says response. After Gandalf enters play, choose one. Draw three cards. Deal four damage to one enemy in play or reduce your threat by five. Not really worried about my threat. I'm gonna just, I think I'm gonna damage, uh, I'm not really worried about the Hummer Horns either. I don't wanna to have to deal with uh, two four spiders necessarily. So I could just take one out. Uh, let's just draw three cards. So there we go. And so now he's entered play during that action window. And so now we'll commit characters to the quest. We'll commit Eowyn and Gandalf. And so we reveal Forest Gate. And that we made three progress. One, two, three. Okay, so we cleared Old Forest Road. Now during the travel phase, we get to travel somewhere. Uh, and this is a good positive res this response this does not exist in this game usually but response after you travel to forest gate actually i should have done this at the end of the quest phase uh, because of sneak attack at the end of the phase if that ally is still in play return it to your hand here comes gandalf back to our hand okay so during travel i get to choose a location to travel to let's travel to forest gate and when we do we draw two cards so our hands getting full and Card draw is, is really the best way to win the game and definitely in solo. Okay, during the encounter phase, I'm not going to optionally engage either enemy and neither will make engagement checks against us. Okay, during combat, shadow cards are dealt and Glowing's ready to defend. Uh, we will exhaust Glowing and take two attack against his one defense. So that's one damage on him and a resource. We'll ready him and we'll do it again. Two against one. Shadow, defending character, must choose and exhaust one character he controls. Two, if the attack is undefended, will exhaust the daughter of the Nimmerdale. So he attacked for two against one. So that's another damage on Glorant, but another resource. I will exhaust daughter of the Nimmerdale to uh, heal Glowing. Okay, 
discard shadow cards at the end of combat, refresh next round. So we're definitely in the driver's seat here. Exhaust, Steward of Gondor, therefore draws two cards. And Glaia Wine draws a card. So we have all three Test of Wills. Let's look at our discard pile real quick. Just see what we have. We have two um, allies in play in the discard pile that we could use to uh, place in and fight to grab if we wanted to. But I think it's better. Let's go ahead and pay two resources to put an Unexpected Courage on the Barovor, and we'll ready her. So now she can kind of be part of uh, combat after having done her action. Okay, do we want to spend any of Barovor's resources? It would make sense to. Um, let's just put this... Uh, chump into play, this guard of the Citadel. And it's kind of a community name, and I think it predates Lord of the Rings, the idea of just chumping, putting out cheap allies that you don't mind uh, losing. Okay, we'll go ahead and put out, even though we don't get any benefit from doing this, there's a response after you play Erebor Hammersmith from your hand, is how it should read, return the topmost attachment in any player's discard pile uh, to his hand. So uh, we'll play Airborne Hammersmith, but he doesn't get that uh, that boost, that response, because there's no there's no uh, attachments in my discard pile. Okay, so this is all still in plan in here. Uh, I'm hanging on to this resource for Test of Will. I don't really want to bring in Snowborn Scout. Uh, he's a great chum, but there are some locations that I'd rather whittle away with Snowborn Scout rather than uh, put in a progress on Force Gate. Uh, I have two resources left with Barabor. If I wanted to, I could put out another Protector of Lorien. No reason to. Okay, so we're going to quest with uh, Eowyn. And actually, before we quest, during that action window that we talked about, we're going to go ahead and bring in Gandalf. We're going to play a sneak attack and bring Gandalf into play. And we will, uh, let's think, Lower our threat by five. Okay, we're going to quest with Gandalf and Eowyn. And we reveal Force Gate again. Okay, things are going well. One, two, three. And let's clear Force Gate by discarding a Steward of Gondor to give Eowyn plus one. And so we made four progress, actually, and cleared Force Gate. At the end of the quest phase, Gandalf comes back to our hand. During the travel phase, we'll travel to Force Gate. And we draw two cards. Okay, so during the encounter phase, our threat's even lower than it was, so nobody's coming down unless we want to optionally engage Chieftain Uftak, which might not be a bad idea for me to show you how that works. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's optionally engage him just to, just to show you how to uh, deal with him if you ever play this quest. Okay, so he's down and he's engaged with us, and so shadow cards for all these, these enemies. Okay, so uh, we want to attack with Chieftain of Thak first. We'll choose him as the first attacker. So he's going to attack for, th for three, and we'll, we'll actually uh, defend with guard of, uh, sorry, with uh, Erebor Hammersmith, because he actually could possibly survive this, because he has an attack and defense of four. So his three attack against Erebor Hammersmith. Let's reveal the shadow card. No shadow effects. So three attack against one defense is two damage on the airborne hammersmith. And now, forced after Chief of Thak attacks, place one resource token on him. And Chief T Chieftain of Thak gets plus two attack for each resource token on him. So he's going to actually be atta attacking for five at this point, moving forward. So he can really get out of control and attack for a lot. Okay, so now we'll do our usual... Glowing defense, uh, two against one. And so Glowing gets a resource out of that. Then he'll exhaust to defend again against this one. And he gets that damage and a resource. We'll heal Glowing with one of our daughters of the Nimrodale. And now um, I think I'm going to take out one of these forest spiders. So one, two, three attack against one 
defense takes out this force fighter. So it leaves play along with his shadow card. At the end of combat, we discard shadow cards. Refresh next round. Very good. Okay, planning phase will exhaust Steward of Gondor and Bearborn draw two cards. Okay, that's a hasty stroke. That's good. We've I've been kind of wanting to have one. Glaywine will draw us a card. It's sneak attack. We might want to hang on to that. Uh, let's go ahead and pay for Calabrian Stone and put that onto Eowyn. It can be attached to a hero. It's restricted. Attached hero gets plus two willpower. So she's got a quest for six now. So you can see how really these little forest spiders are sort of a resource engine with glowing in play. Okay, uh, I want to play three lore resources, one, two, three, to put a forest snare onto Chieftain of Thak. Forest snare is an awesome trap uh, type attachment. Attached to an enemy, engage with a player. Attached enemy cannot attack. So he's incapacitated now. A uh, great card, and we'll see that for sure in the second quest journey journey along the Anduin. Okay, what else do we want to do? There's no reason to play another self-preservation. We just want to save our resources. We have two daughters of the Nimmerdale. Uh, no reason to put uh, the Snowborn Scouts into play yet again. I like to put them into play when there's an, a location that I don't want to travel to. Uh, so I could play Stand and Fight, but I want to save her resources again. So, and I'm not going to play Gandalf, so let's just quest with Eowyn. And that is uh, it for now. Well, let's quest with Glowin as well and Bearborn. Let's make some good progress. We're going to reveal, driven by Shadow, when revealed, each enemy and each location currently in the staging area gets plus one threat until the end of the phase. If there are no cards in the staging area driven by shadow gain surge so i'm just going to put that threat on the card itself so it basically boosted hammer horns by one threat we made eight progress one two three four and one two three four not enough to clear flies and spiders even if i use anyone's action so i won't use her action okay so now they're in travel nowhere to go encounter phase will leave hammer horns there Shadow cards are dealt, including to anybody that has Forest Snare. So if all you had was an enemy that had Forest Snare, you still deal with a shadow card. You just discard it at the end of combat because it could not attack. So I'll just indicate he can't attack. So his, I'll just flip over his forest, uh, his uh, shadow card to reveal that he either has attacked or is done attacking. He, he can't attack. Okay, so we're ready glowing and get some of that good cash. Two against one. Uh, defending player must choose and exhaust one character controls two characters instead if this attack is if this attack is undefended will exhaust a, a uh, daughter of the Nimmerdale. so one uh, damage and one resource for glowing let's heal it with daughter of the Nimmerdale. okay so now we can attack and let's do it a one two against one so we're just kind of whittling away at this force uh, spider End of combat, discard shadow cards. Refresh the next round. Okay. Steward of Gondor, Bearboard draws two cards. My hand's getting kind of full, it's hard to see what everything is. Glay one draws a card. We're ready, Bearboard. Uh, again, no reason to really play. I want to only really play Minor of Iron Hills if a condition comes into play. I don't need to play Forest Snare on Forest Spider. I don't need a self-preservation because I have enough healing to, to stay ahead of the encounter deck. Let's go ahead and put uh, let's think here. I don't want to bring in a Snowborn Scout. Let's go ahead and bring Gandalf into play. We'll just pay five for him, bring him into play, and uh, we'll just kill Hammerhorns and send it to victory display. It just gives us some victory points. So he's in play. We'll quest with Eowyn. It's all we need. Uh, so we reveal. 
enchanted stream for progress one, two, three, four. So you can actually make more progress on the quest than is required. So we actually made 10 progress, but that cleared the location or the quest. And so now we advance to 2A, a fork in the road. As you move through Mirkwood, hounded by spiders, the forest path forks before you. 2B says, unsure of what lies ahead, but spurred by the urgency of your message, you choose a path and proceed. Forced, when you defeat this stage, proceed to one of the 2A, uh, to the 2A uh, chosen path stages at random. That'll happen when we put two progress on a fork in the road. Okay, we can travel to Enchant the Stream, and let's do it. It just tells us we cannot draw cards. So I need to go up here to Options. Cards per round is actually zero. So during the refresh phase, I won't be able to draw cards. Okay, so uh, Shadow Cards are dealt to uh, Chieftain of Thack and Spider, Force Spider. We'll exhaust glowing against this attack of two. And it says attacking enemy gets plus one. This is why I don't want to take undefended with glowing. It would kill him. Two plus three would, would kill any of my heroes. So two against one is, oh, three against one because of the boost is two damage and two resources. We'll exhaust Daughter of the Nimmerdell to heal glowing. We'll ready him. Of course, he can't attack. And so now let's, uh, let's see. Let's see if we can kill Chieftain of Thack. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten is enough to kill him. We'll just do that and send him to the victory display. And then, of course, the Force Snare is discarded, as is the Shadow card. It was attached to Chieftain of Thak. Okay, end of combat, we discard that Shadow card. Refresh. At the end of the round, since we played him from our hand, he leaves play. Okay, next round. Let's exhaust Steward of Gondor. And bear for to draw two cards. And Glaia Wine to draw a card. We'll probably draw a whole hand here. That's good though. The first playthrough, just getting to show you how the game works. It's, it's probably a good thing. All right, we're going to quest past. Uh, wait, did I just draw cards? Yeah, I can't draw cards. Oops. Let's go back. There's a nice little function here. Okay, new round. Okay, because Enchanted Stream is the active location, we cannot draw cards. I want to make sure, yeah, I didn't draw one during refresh. Forgot about that. Okay, Steward of Gondor, we can still gain resources. Um, we, uh, we should have played, whenever Gandalf left play, uh, Valiant Sacrifice. Oh, we can't draw cards. <laughs> That's right. Okay, let's go ahead and put another Unexpected Courage on the glowy, so he can have more than one. Um, let's go ahead and put two Protector of Lorians on uh, Eowyn just for fun, really. Okay, we're going to quest with glowing and Eowyn. We'll ready glowing. And we'll quest with... Uh, well, we don't need to make too much progress, but just in case, let me see. A total of four. Is there anything that can contribute five threat? I don't think so. We could always boost her. So, and we have Protector of Lorien. So, revealing. Oop, there is Ungoliant Spawn. When revealed, each char character currently committed to the quest gets minus one willpower until the end of the phase. Okay, so A1 goes down and Glowing goes down. I'll just do it here. So, I quested for three. And so uh, I'll, I'll take Eowyn's action and discard a card to uh, boost her willpower by one. So I made four progress. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I can, I can turn off this uh, cards per round. I can start drawing cards like normal. Okay, so when we cleared a fork in the road, it says when you defeat a stage, proceed to one of the uh, two eight chosen paths. Uh, stages. So if you look here at the quest deck, there are two cards that have identical backs, and I'll shuffle them right now. Uh, so I shuffled them, and so when I when I move on past a fork in the road, I'll have a random one come out. So they have the same side A back, but side B has a different kind of uh, win condition. 
but since I'm going as Bonds in play, uh, we'll have to defeat her either way. Okay, so we're going to go to 3A. We don't know which B it is, which side B. Uh, the trail winds into one of the darkest, most tangled parts of the forest. You sense that a foul, dark presence is hunting you, and you move quickly in an attempt to avoid its evil. Okay, don't leave the path. The shadows grow darker, and you realize that a foul presence is aiming to draw you from the path. You must defeat it to pass this way. When revealed, each player must search the encounter deck and discard pile for one spider card of his choice and add it to the staging area. Okay, so normally, because at the bottom here, it says the players must find and defeat Ungoliate Spawn uh, to win the game. And so normally, right now, I would be grabbing Ungoliate Spawn and adding her into play, uh, but uh, she's already in play. So I have to grab another card, and we'll, we'll grab Forest Spider. Uh, we'll look for a Forest Spider in the encounter deck. Here is one. We'll shuffle the deck. So we added the uh, search for one Spider card of your choice and add it to the staging area. Very good. Okay, so the questing phase is over, and we don't have to make any progress to win. We just have to de defeat on going and spawn. Okay, nowhere to travel during the encounter phase. We're going to optionally engage on going and spawn because she won't make engagement checks against us. So she's coming down, and then during engagement checks, poor spider comes down. He gets that boost. Shadow cards all the way around. Um, and so now we will sneak attack Gandalf in. And we will put four damage, one, two, three, four, on Ungoliant Spawn. Okay, so Ungoliant Spawn is going to attack for five. Let's uh, just go ahead and jump with the Erebor Hammersmith. So five against, well, no, we want attack. Let's jump with Glaywine. Five against, uh, your Glaywine's dead. But let's see what happens here. No shadow effect. So Glaywine leaves play. We'll play this uh, Valiant Sacrifice response after an ally leaves play. That player's, uh, that card's controller game can draw two cards. I'm actually going to play both of them. You can actually play multiple cards off of one, uh, one trigger. So one, two, we draw four cards. Okay, so I'm going to spawn, attack and kill Glaywine. And now a uh, forest spider is going to attack and kill. Uh, let's go ahead and just sacrifice uh, Daughter of the Nimmerdale. We want to keep our attack. So two against one will be, uh, obviously she'll leave play. And now this forest spider is going to attack for three. We'll jump with this Daughter of the Nimmerdale. Defending player must choose and discard one attachment he controls. Uh, let's discard the Protector of Lorien from Eowyn. So Daughter of the Nimberdell leaves play. So all the enemies have attacked, and now we can attack. And we just need to defeat Ungoliant and Spawn to win. What I'm going to do real quick, though, is play for two cost. I'm going to play Stand and Fight Action. Choose an ally with a printed cost of X in any player's discard pile. Put that ally into play under your control. The chosen ally can belong to any sphere of influence. And that can be a multiplayer from another person's discard uh, pile. We're going to grab out of our discard pile. Uh, let me do that. Just look at the discard. Browse. Allies. Let's grab this Airborne Hammersmith. Now it's important. Uh, choose an ally with a printed cost of X. Put that ally into play. Okay, so putting in the play is different than playing from your hand. Uh, so he doesn't get this response. After you play Airborne Hammersmith, return the topmost attachment in any player's discard pile to your hand. You have to actually have to play him from your hand uh, to get that. You can't cheat him into play. Okay, so let's just attack on Goliath Spawn for 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, and 11. 11 against 2 is 9. So we killed Ungoliant Spawn. It doesn't go to the victory display. It just is just defeated. And as you can see at the bottom of this card, the players must find and defeat Ungoliant Spawn to win the game. 
So we won. That was the quest. Now, if we had picked the other one, a side 3B says uh, we have to make 10 progress. Players cannot defeat the stage while Ungoliant Spawn is in play. But if you defeat the stage, you've won the game. So this one's the more difficult one where you are forced to uh, combat with Ungoliant Spawn. Uh, so that is a game of Lord of the Rings LCG. We won it in eight rounds, and uh, it wasn't too difficult. As you can see, we used Forest Spider to just give us resources with glowing. And so I like that combination with this deck. Uh, so what we'll do is um, we will continue. The next uh, video will be a journey along the Anduin and then on to Escape from uh, Dol Guldur, etc. So I'm glad you joined me, and I hope that you'll... Uh, just join me for the entire duration of the ride. We're going to go all the way through the game. It's going to be a matter of years probably to do that. But uh, I love the game enough to do it. And I hope you do too. Uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, leave a comment or let me know if I've got any rules wrong. Uh, I'm known to re-record videos if, uh, if I get a rules uh, mistake. So definitely point them out. Uh, thanks for joining me and have a great day.